Good morning, faithful viewer. I return to you today, as promised, with a book haul. Uh, you may have noticed I had a shave. I had to shave. Um, I was starting to look like a tramp. People were throwing money at me. Um, tell me to get a haircut and get a shave. Yeah, bum. Uh, so I had to go. Um, so, before we start, I'll give you a wee update on my reading. I have finally started, after many years, A Prayer for Own Meaning by John Irving. Um, it's a slow burn, very slow, but I'm okay with that. I'm enjoying it. I think it's fantastic, and I don't care if it takes me the rest of the year and everything else goes out the window. Um, I will get it finished. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, so that being said, like I say, book haul and then uh, some unboxings. So let's get into this. So the first book I'm going to show you is More Tales of the City by Amistad Maupin. Uh, set in San Francisco, and this follows like the cast of characters from the previous book. Um, I released a video early in the year, I think it was in January, um, where I discussed a series I wanted to continue with this year, and this is one of them, so I can't wait to get to this to find out what um, Anna Madrigold and the gang are up to, because um, I really, really enjoyed the first instalment. Next up we have this. This is the Black Fl Flamingo by Dean Atta. Yeah. Uh, this is a YA book. Um, I picked it up at the Queer Lit um, sort of... What was it? What was it? The Queer Lit sort of panel. This author was there. I would missed his um, talk at the Paisley Literary Festival. So I went to this um, and I picked this up. I'm quite eager to get to it because everybody I know who's read it raves about it. And it's more... It's not so, it's not so much about coming out. It's about um, self-acceptance. And it looks like a lot of it is written actually in, in poetry form, that type of thing. So I'm quite eager to get to that. Hopefully I can get to that at the end of the month. If I've finished A Prayer for Own Meaning. Next up, we have another series. This is The Talented Mr. Varg by Alexander McCall Smith. This is book two in the, um, the Detective Varg series set in Malmo in Sweden. Uh, I read the first book last year, I really enjoyed it and I've been really eager to get this. Um, but obviously with coronavirus, um, the release date kept getting pushed back and pushed back, but I finally got my hands on it and I can't wait to continue with this series. Um, should be fun. Lighthearted fun. Right, next up, we've got a load of these books for a change of pace. Um, I imagine if you've been on the channel recently, this won't come as a surprise to you. But uh, I've got a load of these gay cowboy mo um, books. I actually thought I was much further into the series than I am. Uh, so I'm a bit surprised. So these are all out of order. So what have we got? Texas Wedding. Texas Family. These are all by RJ Scott. They're sort of male male romances. It's about gay cowboys and them sort of raising a family and all the drama and... Texas Ranches and that kind of thing. What's this one called? Texas Christmas. These all take five minutes to read, so I'll get through these quite quick. Texas Fall. Um, and Texas Gift, which I believe is the last in the series. So we'll get through them quite quick. Um, and then that's another series out the road, and I can knock it off the list. The next two... Um, for a change of pace, or, well, I, I, I think they're, they're Christian books. Um, if you've been on the channel for a while, which you maybe not have, um, one of the things I mentioned was I was always kind of interested in religion and essentially that side of things and what makes people tick, what makes them believe, what they believe. Um, so I've picked up these. It's called Where the River Flows. Or where rivers flow, I should say, by Andrew Scarbrand. It's a guide to capturing the heart of God and sharing it across the road and across the globe. Um, just a quick reread. I'll get through that at some point, just out of interest. And another one by the same guy is called From Hater to Healer. Um, one Skeptic's Journey into the Supernatural. So we'll see what this is like. Quite a big font in these two. Um, not very thick either, though. Both about. 100, 200 pages, so we'll be able to knock them out quite quick. Um, so moving on, 
this is the last book I'll show you before we do the unboxing. I picked up the latest in the Skullduggery Pleasant series. This is Seasons of War um, by Derek Landy. I still have to read Bedlam before I can get to this, but I saw this was out and I have to get the hardback. As you know, I'm, I have to get those because that's what I started with. Um, so this is the latest in the series. Um, we'll see how things fly with this. Don't know much about it, like I say, but um, again, it follows Skullduggery Pleasant, who's like a skeleton detective, and it's all sort of supernatural things set in Ireland, and it's a sort of um, more horror-focused version of maybe something like Harry Potter, that type of thing, so we'll get to that at some point. Now, I'll do the unboxings. Now, I know what these are. I don't know what what is in each box, but I know what the, the books are once we get to them, so here we go. I'm going all Steve Donner here. Somebody get me a dog. Yeah. So this one is A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne. Um, am I right in saying this won the booktube prize last year? It's ringing a bell. Um, but this is an author I've just wanted to kind of get into because um, I know he gets a lot of praise. I want to read this and then if I like this I'll into more of his sort of back catalogue um, and that kind of thing. It says on the top, A deliciously dark tale of ambition, seduction and literary theft. That's from The Observer, which is okay. On the back it says, Clever, chilling and beautifully paced. That's from The Times, so take that with a pinch of salt. And Patrick Gale, who, that name rings a bell, says it's endlessly inventive and wicked, wickedly funny, so that sounds ideal for me. So we'll get into this. I think I'm going to get into this maybe next month, because I really want to get into his writing and see if I like it, and if I have a new favourite author, who knows. Now this is a, this one here is a booktube recommendation that I saw on, um, I think it was Brian's channel, uh, Brian over at Bookish. I think he was talking about it in a couple of videos and it just sort of caught my eye and it's called Leonard and Hungry Paul by Ronan Hessian. I do apologise if I've uh, butchered that name. Uh, on the back it says Leonard and Hungry Paul are two quiet friends who see the world differently. They use humour, board games and silence the steal their way through the Maelstrom that is the 21st century, so that sounds quite good. And like I say, it was recommended by Brian, who, um, whose opinion I rate on here. So uh, we'll get into this quite quick, and like I say, these two books I think are probably going to be um, quite near the top of my TBR once I finish A Prayer for Own Mini, which I'm hoping to finish again by the end of the month so I can take part in another readathon. Um, so that's me, that's everything. That's all the V books. I should probably point, point out for anybody of a sensitive nature that quite a few of these I actually got before the lockdown and then I kind of had a crisis of confidence about buying more from online but someone sort of put me straight about that. So I'm going to try and hold them up but there is far too many so we'll just hold up some. So three, two, one. Oh god, what a face, eh? Looks like I should be scaring the wains. Um, if you have any thoughts on the, the novels, or if you have any recommendations, or if you just want to say hello, feel free to um, pop it down below and I'll get back to you. As always, thanks for watching. I hope to see you again. Stay safe. Bye-bye.